So I just got an order from Sephora yesterday that I had placed uh, just at the time that I did my last video. And I was very excited. Um, I had ordered the uh, Let's Mess Around lipstick and it's a luster and it's beautiful. The packaging is beautiful anyways. And I also love the color. So I was very happy with the fact that uh, the color lived up to the expectation of what I had. Because sometimes, you know, when you look online, um, the color that ends up coming is not what you thought it was going to be. So in any case, this is the packaging. It's beautiful. And... Uh, this is the color of the lipstick. So in my opinion, it is a mauve pink, but it's very light. And what I'm really happy about with this lipstick is I used to love a color from Tarte. I believe it was their butter lipstick it was called. In any case, it was called Park Avenue Princess, and it was just a beautiful, your lips but better. You could hardly tell that it was on, but it was such a beautiful color, and as far as I know, they've discontinued it. When they had their last sale, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I think I ordered three tubes, and I kept one at home, one in my purse, and one at work, and they're all gone now. So in any case, I'm happy with the fact that this is very um, similar to that color. So in any case, I'll be using that today. So I thought for this video, what I would do is more of a chatty get ready with me. Um, I'm going to switch up the products a bit this time. But yeah, I just thought I would talk about a few things and get ready at the same time. So that is what I will do. But I will tell you what I'm doing as I do it. So what I'm going to use first is I have this... Uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation stick. It's actually called Shadow Stick Foundation. It's for contour. I guess I put it in the areas where you would contour, but I'm not necessarily using it as a contour. I do like how it just adds a little bit of warmth to my face. I don't like too much warmth though, because I actually prefer a lot of cool colors. Um, and a coolness to my face. But in any case, uh, this is called, uh, actually, sorry, the shade is called Shadow. So it's a very cool um, brownish gray almost. If you have a much darker complexion than mine, even a few shades, I'm sure it wouldn't show up at all. Uh, you could see when I add it in a minute. So because I'm relatively fair, you can see it there. But as I said, if you were a few shades darker than I am, probably you wouldn't see anything. I can put some on my hand just if that's a better. It almost reminds me of the Maybelline. Uh, they had a cream shadow. I can't remember what it's called, but it was in the pot. Um, I could look that up. So in any case, what I do now is I take my Real Techniques, um, this is old and the name is rubbed off, but I think it was a foundation brush of some sort because it's very dense. And I just rub that in. So in any case, as I was planning on this tutorial, I was thinking, what could I talk about? And I mean, obviously, we're human beings. There are a million things that we could talk about. But uh, I thought I would talk about some random things, but also a few of uh, the things that I have been enjoying lately. I don't want to call this a favorites video because I do tend to stick with the same group of products. Uh, I don't, you know, when people show their makeup collections, mine is not a collection so much as... Mm, a small gathering of makeup products. I do love makeup. I just don't love parting with the money 
that comes with having a huge makeup collection. So as you can see, it doesn't look like that did much, but it did add a little bit of warmth to my face. So what I do next is I take that same stick and I just add it up here, which actually doesn't really matter that much because if you've seen my last video, I have bangs. So this gets covered, but maybe at some point I may sweep my bangs across. So I just do this anyways, just so it matches the rest of my face. Oh, on the note of the chatty get ready with me, as I just came near this area of my face slash head slash my ear, I recently got um, my helix pierced and I don't regret it because I've actually wanted it for a long time. But the healing process, I think, I think I got it about three and a half weeks ago now. And I remember watching a tutorial with uh, Nick from Pixie Woo or Sam and Nick Chapman. It's the sister duo that came up with the uh, Real Techniques brush line. Uh, for those of you that don't know, they have a YouTube channel and they are amazing. They've been around forever. OG YouTube tutorial or makeup tutorial um, royalty right there. In any case, I remember watching one of her videos and she had mentioned that she had gotten her helix pierced. And I remember her saying that it was uncomfortable and that it bothered her when she slept. Believe it, it's true. It's, it's, it's something else. And you hit it the wrong way, your brush snags it. I'm so careful around that area now even when I go to uh, move my hair from my ear, I can't, I don't even rub it backwards. I rub it forwards because the slightest strand will get snagged on there and it just kills. So, but I mean, I'm not concerned um, because when I read the instructions and care or aftercare for the piercing, healing is six, six months to a year. So I'm about three and a half weeks in, I should be okay. So, that's that. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with it. I like it. I just wish that the place that I got them pierced at had had different jewelry at the time. This was all they had. Um, and since I don't plan on taking them out for some time or changing up the jewelry because of the healing time, those are going to be in for a while. So I just wish, I wish something a little more sparkly had been available at the time. Okay. So what am I going to do next? I got my order from Sephora, as I said, and because I spent a certain amount, uh, I got to choose, I think it was five or six. It was a pretty big number of foundations. Now, as I said, I don't really like foundation. I find it snags, it catches, no matter what it is, you can recommend a million different foundations, BB creams, anything. They settle in my fine lines. They catch on any dry skin that I have. So I actually just prefer not to wear foundation, but for today, just for the sake of trying something new, uh, one of the selections that I received was the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. And this is in the shade Y205. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit light for me, but what I plan to do is actually just put it a little bit under my eyes, maybe on my nose. I'm, I want to keep the color that is there from the Anastasia Stick Foundation. So I'm just going to put that on the back of my hand. It came out very thick. So that's entirely too much for me, but it is a squeeze tube, so I can't put any of it back. Um, so now I'm going to take my beauty blender and I'm just going to rub it on the back of my hand or bounce it on the back of my hand because it is extremely light. Yes. So this is going to go under my eyes for sure. So I'll rest it there. Just so you could see the difference between my complexion color. Also, um, I prefer the Beauty Blender 
in comparison to brushes. I do like my fingers sometimes, but the thing is, um, a lot of times when I will try to apply something with a brush, if it's all over my face, I do find that it leaves streaks no matter what I do. I can swirl it, I can swipe it, I can dab it, I can stipple it, it doesn't matter. It still leaves streaks. So now, at this point in time, I'm actually glad I did not put it all over my face. It's nothing against the foundation, it's just, again, I'm sorry, I don't love foundation, but it's already settling in the lines under my eyes and I know that some people would say at this point oh just bake uh, put a primer I don't want to have to do all of those steps so I have three kids uh, in September they will be 10 7 and 4 and I just all of the steps I don't have time for on a daily basis so I'm just going to leave that for now as it is and I will be putting the hourglass finishing powder that I used in my last video at the at the end uh, over this section. So what else can I talk about? Well, I had wanted to mention that I received as a gift, not from anyone on YouTube, obviously. I have one video, so I don't receive gifts <laughs> yet. But I received as a gift um, this perfume excuse my fingerprint that I just put on it. It's called Calvin Klein Women. Not a big fan of the bottle, but the scent, in my opinion, is amazing. So if you've ever smelled Joe Malone, Wood Sage and Sea Salt, or if you've ever smelled DKNY, it's the one in the tall uh, rectangular prism bottle. It's, it's transparent. It's colorless. I had it a long time ago. It's almost as if those two fragrances got together and had a baby fragrance. It, it smells so good. I have it on today. I would say that it's slightly florally, slightly woodsy, uh, very fresh smelling, but uh, the Jo Malone is just a little too pricey for me. And uh, the DKNY I found was very, very, uh, I don't want to say overpowering, but it's a strong fragrance. But some people like that. So what I actually do with this one is I just spray it on a surface first and then I dab my fingers in it. I put it on the inside of my wrists. I put it on the inside of my elbows. Um, I put it by my ears and just on the pressure points that warm up naturally. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a beautiful scent. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another sample that I got from Sephora, but this was some time ago. It's the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to put it on my eyelids. I was watching a little bit of uh, Emily Noel last night on YouTube and she had gotten these uh, new formulation or new color Revlon lip glosses from the drugstore. So I think I might check out Walmart. There were two colors at the beginning. She wasn't a huge fan of these two colors. Well, they weren't her favorite. She didn't say anything negative about them, but they look like they would be my favorite. They're very similar to the color family that I like to stick to. So I might check those out. And I also got a book from the library recently. Um, I think the original title was Paula's Choice. And you know the almost big almanac dictionary and it's like, don't go to the makeup counter without me, those books. So anyways, I was looking at those and it's funny because I love going to Sephora. Um, before I had my first, so it was over, it was about 11 years ago now, I was a holiday helper there for the Christmas holidays. And I actually got asked to stay on after the holidays were over, but that's when I found out I was pregnant and just the, the scent was too overwhelming. I just, I couldn't handle it at the time, but uh, it, October, November, December, January, it was the best four and a half months of my life. 
I loved working there. Um, so in any case, so I just mentioned that because I'm not putting Sephora down. I love Sephora, but part of the problem with Sephora is you almost feel like you're splurging every time you shop there or every time you go online and order from there, right? You, you consider it to be a treat. And I guess part of my problem with that financially is I always wonder, am I paying for the name? Am I paying for the uh, packaging that the product comes in? And I love so many products from there, but if I can get something that performs at the same level, um, same longevity, same color payoff, same uh, user friendliness, then if I could pay less, obviously I'd like to do that. Now don't get me wrong, if I have a gift card to Sephora, I will, I will use that. But as I said, that being said, I just would like to save money. So in any case, I was reading that book that I was telling you about and she was mentioning all of the products and best, better, average. And I was happy to see uh, L'Oreal was in there for their mascaras because as I mentioned in my last video, the telescopic is a long time favorite of mine. I go to other mascaras and I come back to that mascara. I just, I really enjoy it. Okay, so I like how that's looking for now. And I think what I'll do today is I will switch up. Last time I used the uh, Hourglass Dim Light. Today I'm going to use this palette which I showed in my last video. It's the Tarte Clay Play Face Shaping Palette. And I'm going to use this color here. Please excuse the very, very dirty mirror. Um, I'm going to use the color Desert and I'm going to use it in this area here. Not to contour, just to warm up. So what else can I talk about? And I'm going to blend this out. I know it, it seems very harsh in this light. Um, I am awaiting a pair of custom Air Max 90s from Nike. I ordered them a while ago and they've been taking a while, obviously, but you know what? I don't mind waiting because it's nice to have something to look forward to, but, uh, Monday here in Ontario, Canada, where I live, uh, it actually might have been just the city. So, or the GTA, it was a civic holiday. So a lot of things were open, but there was no mail delivery on Monday. So the delivery of the shoes was delayed. And then I thought they would come yesterday, which was Tuesday, today is Wednesday, and I see that they are out for delivery today. So I'm very excited about that. Um, as I mentioned, they're custom. So I designed them myself and I wanted rose gold, which I know is very trendy right now, but uh, my husband um, for Mother's Day, gave me his credit card, which was very nice, and said, go to Sephora and get yourself some things. <clears throat> now, I went to Sephora, but the problem is I kept picking up things and then I would think, well, do I want this or do I want that? Or do I want something different? Or do I already have something like this? So I did get myself a couple of things, but what I had wanted for a while was a pair of the Air Max 90s, the black ones with the white swoosh. So I got those for myself and I love them and I wear them all the time. I just enjoy them because part of the thing is as well is that when I was younger, you, your parents buy most of your, your clothing, shoes, that kind of stuff for you. And they were expensive even back then. I mean, they've gone up in price now, but they were expensive even back then. And so n I never had a pair. I did have a pair of the low cut champions because that's what my mom would buy me. She would never buy me the high top ones, um, which is fine. I did like my low cuts, but I'm on a tangent. So I've been really enjoying the Air Max 90s, the black ones, but I wanted a pink pair. 
just for fun, just because. And I couldn't find them anywhere. I don't mean online anywhere because of course you can find anything online, but I couldn't find ones that I liked everything about. So I designed my own and they're supposed to come today. So I'm looking forward to receiving those. Okay, so I've blended that out. And in my mirror anyways, it looks nice and blended to me. So what I'm going to do today is I believe last time I used the milk um, cheek and lip color. Today I'm going to use, or did I use my radiant magenta last time by Hourglass? I think what I'll do today is I will use from the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 3 palette. Again, I apologize for all of the finger marks and etc. but the reality is that I use my products. So, as you could see. So I'm going to use this color down here, which is Pure Effect Blush. And I'll just put a little here. Um, I don't want too much blush today because I think I'm going to do something a little different on the eyes than I would normally do. And it's funny too, because now I understand, you know, a lot of the influencers, they will post videos and they're doing looks, they're doing tutorials and they'll say, and then I'm just going to wash this off afterwards and go to bed. And I think, oh my gosh, that was a lot of work to go to bed. But the thing is a lot of those looks, you could wear them out, that's your choice. But a lot of those looks are pretty extreme for just everyday wear. So I do understand now why a lot of influencers make their videos at night and then just wash them off because they don't actually have to leave the house with it on. I don't mean that in a negative way. Okay, so you know what? What I'm actually gonna do now is I'm going to take the Let's Mess Around lipstick that I just received, purchased, and I'm going to apply it. Now, as I mentioned, it's not going to be a huge difference from my natural lip color, but I'm going to base my eye look off of this. I also ordered another tube of Oyster Girl, which I again referenced in my last video. And what I'll do is I'll swatch this on my hand too so you can see. But I just, I like the color a lot. Again, I, as I mentioned, it reminds me of Tarte's um, Park Avenue Princess. So what I can do is I didn't bring a wipe to wipe the foundation off of my hand. So I'm just trying to improvise right now. Um, okay, let's wipe it with my hand. So what I'll do is I'll show you, let's mess around there. As you can see, very light, very natural. And this is Oyster Girl. So I will put that beside, let's mess around. Very clear, very natural looking. I'm gonna put that on top. And as you can see, it's just adding a hint of shine. And then I'll take my finger and just blend it in a little bit. So I like how that's looking. And it's funny because I'm looking in front of uh, me right now and I had laid out some makeup that I had planned to use. And I see that I have my <laughs> tiny Natasha Denona blush and glow. Again, finger marks are gonna be on here because I've used it. So when I was in the Beauty Bay checkout area, I think that's what it's called at Sephora, I don't know, about six months, eight months ago now, this was there and they got me. They always get you in that checkout. So, um, I'm just looking to see if they have the names. I don't see the names here, but anyways, this is what it looks like. 
and the highlight is very natural it's so beautiful and the blush is actually really nice too but i would consider this blush to be more of a topper so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this mac 161 ses looks like some sort of stippling brush i'm going to put it in the highlight and i'll put it right here so i don't know if you could see i'll swish my cheek around a little bit but very natural pops in the right area I'll pat that down a little bit uh, and then I'll put a little tiny bit of the blush over top just so you could see but as we know I've already put the hourglass there And then at the end, what I'll do again is I'm going to spray everything with the water. At some point, maybe I might get some sort of setting spray. But another issue I have with the setting spray is there's a lot of ingredients in that. Uh, I'm not going to say anything negative about a certain product. However, when I was in Sephora recently, there was a very hyped up setting spray that a lot of people have been talking about. And everyone who does review it who does speak about it says that it does an amazing job at what it's supposed to do but the fragrance the overpowering fragrance is referenced a lot by many many people and i i sprayed it and i'm sure it does do an amazing job but much like so many people have said as soon as i smelled it i almost felt the migraine coming on so products that are in the setting sprays do concern me somewhat and I know that people could make the argument, well, check the back of every product you use unless um, you, you know for sure exactly what's in it. And there will be um, chemicals linked to this, products linked to this, ingredients that have been known to do that. But just setting sprays in general, just, I don't know, spraying them on my face and letting them soak in, I just, it concerns me a little bit. Okay, so that rant over. So what I'm going to do now is I think today's look will be entirely from the chocolate bar palette. And I do love this palette. Everyone does this. That's the first time I've ever done that. I don't really get much of a strong scent of any kind, but. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take white chocolate right here. I'm going to put that all the way up to my brow bone and across my lid. So what else can I discuss then? So I was thinking after I posted my last video, I saw a few likes by a couple of friends, blast from the past, that I recently saw at a reunion for Gaelic football. So I thought, you know what? I might give a shout out to Gaelic football in this video. And the thing is, unfortunately, it'd be nice if I had a larger following because then I could reach more people. But realistically, there are tons of videos um, on YouTube about Gaelic football. So I thought I would talk about it anyways, though. Um, I'm just trying to think age-wise right now without actually saying how old I am, though many people know. So let me just think. Nine 1992, 93, yeah, probably 93, 94, I started playing Gaelic football, which is an Irish sport. I don't play anymore, by the way. I just attend reunions. Um, and Gaelic football, as I said, is an Irish sport, and it's very similar to Aussie rules, which is like rugby for those of you that haven't seen. Um, so with Gaelic football, you can solo the ball, which is kicking the ball back to yourself. So you drop it to your foot, you kick it back to yourself and you run down the field. Uh, it has a little bit of basketball in it because you can bounce the ball from hand to field in order to gain control. A uh, little bit like football, as you can score through the uprights and get points. Uh, much like soccer, you can kick the ball on the ground and you can score in the net. There is a keeper. Unfortunately, I cannot remember the exact number of players that you can have on the field at a time. Something in my mind wants to say 15, 
but it is an amazing sport. Um, there are teams across Canada. My experience was mostly limited to Ontario. So there was a team from Brampton. Uh, there was a team, there were quite a few teams from the GTA. I played for Durham. So that included Oshawa, Whitby, Ajax, and then I lived in Scarborough at the time. There was a Toronto team. Uh, we would travel to Ottawa. We would travel to Montreal. And I have to tell you, those were some of the best years of my life. I made so many great friends at the time. The level of competition was excellent. We would also send teams over to um, Ireland, down to New York. And uh, it's just a phenomenal sport. So if you are of playing age, <laughs> meaning you don't feel too old to play anymore, if that's something you want to look into, um, you can look online. As I said, I played for Durham. I, I live in Ontario in Canada, so that's still there. Uh, there are many teams. If you have young children, definitely something to look into. It's, it's a great sport. And the competition, as I mentioned, was excellent. There are men's teams, there are women's teams, there's minor teams. And again, as I mentioned, uh, they do send teams over internationally as well. So, excellent sport. I'm right now using milk chocolate just up above my crease. As I mentioned in my last video, my eye um, space between here is somewhat limited so I'm just trying to make it look a little bit bigger. I do want to do a look that is somewhat different from my last look as well even though I tend to do very similar looks all of the time. Okay so what I think I'll do now is I'm going to take some cherry cordial which is right here And I will put that into my crease. And as I mentioned as well, I'm basing a lot of this look off the lip. So I've been watching quite a few tutorials lately uh, or videos. I don't, I shouldn't always call them tutorials because they're not, but um, I was excited to see that Lisa Eldridge had released some more lipsticks to her collection. I'm definitely a huge fan. I just, I can't afford to make that purchase right now. I would love to, but uh, yeah, I definitely would recommend checking out her channel. I did reference in my last video underneath uh, some of my um, original YouTubers who I wanted to thank who I appreciate, who are definitely huge influences on my style and who, who I just enjoy watching a lot. So right now I am using Haute Chocolate. And what I'm going to do for the next little bit is just keep taking most of these colors through my crease. I do like how uh, I've seen a lot of uh, tutorials with the lighter color in the middle and then the darker on the outside. So I think I might give that a try. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'll try it. Okay, let's go for Gilded Ganache. What I'm doing now is I'm actually just procrastinating because I'm trying to decide which colors to put on the outer and inner. You know when you watch TV shows or Netflix or something like that? It could be a movie. It doesn't have to be a TV show. But you see a person's makeup and you think that makeup is beautiful. I'm sure people do it all the time. But uh, one of the series that I enjoy on Netflix is um, Grace and Frankie with uh, Jane Fonda. And her makeup is so beautiful all of the time. I wouldn't say that I tried to recreate one of her looks, but when I do certain aspects of my own makeup, I reference looks that she's had in some of the episodes and try to, I guess, 
attempt that look in that like her eye area for instance i love her eye makeup in all of the episodes they're just beautiful okay the time has come the time has come i am going to take there we go i'm going to take marzipan i'm going to take my finger i don't know if i showed that high enough marzipan i'm gonna take my finger i'm gonna put that right in the middle here i like the shine of that Ooh, looks nice after i do marzipan i'm going to take darker color on the outside so i think what i'll do is I don't want to go too dark. I think I'll go with amaretto on the outer and inner. And I think what I will do on that is take this Mac 239 SE brush and I'm going to touch it on the back of my hand because, oh, it's not, it's not actually, it shears out quite a bit, but I'm still taking it on the back of my hand just to shear it out so I don't get too much fallout. Looks nice. It's funny too, because I have to admire um, makeup lovers who are not afraid to try certain looks and therefore purchase certain items to try certain looks. I've seen a lot of people trying out the Jeffree Star palettes lately. Um, I'm part of a group on Facebook for Canadians only, it's makeup lovers. And so many people were ordering his mystery box and referencing his palettes and how much they love them. And I like watching Jeffree Star. I do. I find him very entertaining, um, just engaging. But at the same time, just I, I wouldn't be able to justify purchasing his palettes just because the, co the colors are a little too extreme for what I go for on a daily basis. But I mean, they are, they're very, they're, they're beautiful palettes. The colors are beautiful anyway. So I'm just packing on a little more of amaretto on the outside and the inside of my eye. And this video probably is going to be a little bit longer than my other one because this is, as I mentioned at the beginning, more of a chatty. Get ready with me. So what else can I reference with regards to things that I've been enjoying lately? Well, I've really been enjoying my front entranceway patio. I purchased a lounge set for my husband for his birthday so we could sit out and enjoy our front entranceway and I've been using it all of the time every single day to drink my coffee. And while I'm out there, I like to read and uh, just at the end of June, I started rereading uh, Stephen King's It. And it was a little bit intentional and a little bit unintentional. Um, I guess at the back of my mind, I knew that It Chapter 2 was coming out eventually. I just didn't realize it was coming out at the end of this summer. I believe September 6th is the release date here in Canada anyways. Um, and it's funny because I read the book a long time ago, originally 27 years ago, and I didn't notice until it was referenced in the book that the big incidents or many incidences in the book tend to happen every 27 years. So that was a little, <laughs> was a little bit unnerving, but I don't know. I've always enjoyed Stephen King. I do plan to see it chapter two in September when it comes out. And uh, yeah, so I finished the book. It is very long, but you know what? As I mentioned, I've, I've been a fan for some time and with life getting busier, responsibilities, getting a little more heavy. It's hard to find time to read. And I know a lot of people do audible and uh, download eBooks, but I, I enjoy reading because I just enjoy 
visualizing the characters in my head and as well I enjoy imagining what that character's voice would sound like as opposed to someone else reading it for me. So to each their own though. Okay, so I like that. Uh, I think what I'll do is I will take a little bit more of the white chocolate and I'm just gonna add it to my brow bone. I'm not sure if I'll put anything underneath. Because my eyes are pretty small, uh, I find when I add things underneath, it actually just kind of enhances the the size of my eyes. So, and what I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning up any fallout that happened. When you see me do this. But yeah, I, I like how that's looking. I think I will. I think it will add something underneath. I'm just going to take a little bit of Q-tip. I have some water here. I'm just going to wipe here. And then I don't know, I might start with, I know a lot of times people add the exact same colors underneath. I'll just add a tiny bit. Okay, so I'm going to take this brush by Urban Decay and the name of the brush, the number of the brush wiped off a long time ago. I'm going to take milk chocolate. I'm going to put it underneath. Trying to keep it as close to the lash line as possible. I also did uh, a little bit of online shopping. I received an email from Old Navy that if you spent 100, you can get 40% off. That was a couple days ago. So I actually purchased a couple of jumpers. Um, I got this shirt, which I think is very cute. I'm very happy with the shirt. And I purchased a pink windbreaker, light pink pastel, to match my shoes when they arrive. I won't only wear it with the shoes though. I'm very happy with it. If anyone wants to see that, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I actually ended up bringing back three of the items, but I kept four, I believe. So, so yeah, I'm happy with that. What I'll do now is I'm going to take a black forest truffle, which is right here. I'm not sure how far in the eye I will take that. And then I'm just going to clean up with a Q-tip after, apply some mascara. I'm liking this look. It's more than I would typically put on for an everyday look, but I wanted to go a little bit out of my comfort zone today, so. So yeah, back to my Helix piercing. I wanna go get my um, highlights touched up soon, but I'm a little bit afraid <laughs> because I, there's, there's almost no way that you can touch that unless you keep your head sideways, which actually when I've been washing my hair, I do. I tilt my head to the right and try to keep all my hair hanging down just so that I don't touch it. It's, it's something. I don't want to make anyone afraid to get it, but it just, it's, it's intense. I, I don't regret it though. Okay, last step. I feel like I should just take this. Real Techniques base shadow brush, and I'm going to dip it in the Black Forest Truffle, which was the color I just used on my lower lash line. And I just want to press it just a little bit in here. I don't want to go too intense though. And then I'll blend it a little bit with my fluffy Sephora brush. This is the rounded crease brush. I've had this forever. I love it. I got it in my gratis when I worked at Sephora and I was a holiday helper there. Um, so you're sometimes given uh, free items or returned items that 
have not been, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You wouldn't get a mascara or anything like that that someone's returned because you could potentially have negative side effects from that. But um, things like a blush, um, a, a, a loose powder, a bronzer, something like that, that someone's returned rather than it get thrown in the garbage, you could get that in your gratis. So in any case, uh, this was not returned, but I got that brush in my gratis many, many years ago, and it's a great brush. I do, or I have tried to purchase some brushes. This is a um, still, I think this is from Walmart, still spa essentials, and just nothing compares to the, the fluffiness of this brush. I really, really like it. So I like how that looks. I'm gonna do my um, eyebrows now. This look is taking a long time. But again, that's the whole point of a chatty. Get ready with me, right? So let's see what else I can talk about. I've been enjoying the summer. Um, I do teach. I'm an elementary school teacher. So I've been enjoying the time off with my kids. Lots of relaxing, lots of enjoying the outdoors. Um, they might be going to a local community pool today with their dad, which they're looking forward to. Um, the thing about summer is that when you are trying to entertain your kids, a lot of it comes down to spending money. And sorry to bring up the money again, but summer can be expensive when you're trying to find things to do. So I know what, in past anyways, what I've really tried to do is utilize our local splash pads and our local parks. And what I mean by parks is not just, we have a park near us. I'm not necessarily talking about just your local park with a slide and a swing, but the ones where typically the splash pads are located or the community pools are located. Those parks are nice for um, the kids to enjoy and there's usually a lot of other kids there as well. So I like to make use of those. And then when I'm really trying to be sure to be cost effective, um, I'll pack our own snacks and stuff. And probably uh, June, July, August, just over a year, 14 months now, I've been trying the keto lifestyle. And it's funny because uh, my husband and I, we enjoy watching Jersey Shore. We PVR'd it. So it's not one of the newest uh, episodes or anything. But Vinny, who they call the Keto Guido, he's been doing keto for some time now and uh, I actually don't mind it. I don't ever feel deprived. I find it's a lot easier to maintain during the school year because I make my snacks, my lunch, all the food I'm going to eat the next day, I do it the night before. So there's kind of no room for slipping up, no room for being too tired to take the time to make something that is keto friendly. Um, and I do find as well, cause I know as someone who has struggled since they were younger with having a certain body style or body type, I would be what is considered pear shaped. So my lower body is definitely curvaceous. And I know when I was younger in 15, 16, I struggled a lot with body image issues because there were many girls that didn't have that body type. And at that time, that was the body type that you wanted to have. Um, and so 
I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent now, but uh, what I was originally talking about was the summer. What I will say is now I wish some of the body acceptance that's going on today had been around when I was younger because it affects you a lot. Um, you know, can affect you into your adulthood as well. And although I'm a lot more comfortable in my own skin now and happier with who I am, it was tough when I was younger. I, I wish I could talk to the younger me now. But anyways, that aside, the whole point of me saying that was that uh, we, <laughs> we are enjoying summer. Summer's going well. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to grab that Natasha Denona again, just go over my highlight one last time. I cannot even tell you how long I've been talking for now. And then I'm going to clean up, I see here just a little bit of a shadow. And I haven't put on mascara yet. What I'm going to do is, I guess I'll put on mascara first. Last time I sprayed my face first and I will be using my lash curler today. Put on a coat of my L'Oreal Telescopic. So jumping all over the place, back to Stephen King, I am definitely looking forward to seeing It, Chapter 2. Um, horror is my genre. I love horror. I've also been re-watching Mad Men on Netflix. Oh, that Don Draper infuriates me, honestly. I, I cannot, I love watching the show because it's just so aesthetically pleasing. And it's so interesting as someone who did not grow up in that era, just to see the different um, expectations back then, the different way of behaving. It's, it, I, I love the writing on that show. It's so clever. Acting. Phenomenal, but just Don Draper makes me so angry. Which I guess would be a combination of excellent writing skills and great acting skills on John Hamm's part. Have you ever noticed though, he looks completely different. Typically men generally look the same. Um, for example, if you look at Roger Sterling. I find that he looks the same in interviews as he does on the show, but John Hamm, he just, it doesn't even look like the same person. He's just so sharp and handsome and clean cut in Mad Men. And then his max and relaxed laid back image in his interviews is not even the same person, which again, that's the whole point of acting, right? But uh, yeah. So Mad Men, love it. We've been watching the most recent season of Orange is the New Black as well. Um, I find, I don't know, maybe because it's the last season, but it, I need to see a few more light um, comedic type situations. This is a really heavy season. Um, Suzanne though, that Suzanne steals the show. I don't LOL for a lot of shows, but Suzanne's parts do make me laugh. I really, really enjoy Suzanne. She's a great actress or actor. Um, but yeah, obviously almost everyone in that show does a phenomenal job. I find that I skip by the song at the beginning though. 
Does anyone else do that? I know that people will be like, well, yes, everyone skips past the intro to a show. They just want to get to the show. But I, I just, I, the song at the beginning, the You've Got Time, I, I don't know. I just like to skip by it really fast. Nothing against the artist. Everyone has their own personal preference when it comes to music, but. Which bring me to my next point or question. I was thinking it might be neat. I typically listen to music when I do my makeup, but when you're doing a video or a tutorial, you can't really listen to music because it's going to affect the outcome uh, and be difficult for anyone watching, also known as viewers. But uh, what I was thinking was I quite enjoy music and I quite enjoy singing. So I was thinking maybe in my next video, I might do a look, but perhaps do a little bit of singing as well. Sounds ridiculous, but I'd like to try it. So if you have any thoughts or opinions, let me know in the comment section down below. For our talent show at school at the end of the year, and I know I have eyelashes on my face, I'll get them. Um, it did the uh, acoustic version of AHA's Take On Me. And I was thinking I might start with that one because I love it and I'm comfortable with it. And anyways, that's just my plan. So I'll give myself a spray now. I'm gonna keep my bangs back for a minute because if I get them wet, um, it's not gonna be a good situation. And again, that's just water. In my everyday life, what I also do is, um, I know some influencers have a fan and they, uh, a handheld fan and they blow. I have a huge window fan that I stand in front of and I just put it on the highest level and just let everything soak in and dry. So I'm really happy with the look. As I said, I'm just waiting for this to dry a little bit and then I will put my bangs down. Now I washed my hair and dried it immediately before doing this. So I have a feeling my bangs are gonna, oh, okay. That's nice. I'm feeling, I'm feeling this look. I'm happy with it. I'm just going to take my Q-tip and give this a little swipe over here as well. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know if there are any things that you would like to hear more discussion about for the next video, please let me know. I do want to share my uh, Air Max 90s when they come in my next video. And my plan is hopefully for about a video a week. But yeah, if there's any questions, any comments, any suggestions, please let me know and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this very, very chatty long video. Have a great day.